Out of all the different programming skills there are to have, which one do you think is the most important? There's a lot of different skills, right? As a programmer, you need to be good at handling your logic carefully. You need to be good at math, you need to be good at passing your data from one module to another, being able to coordinate between different data modules. When it comes to working on a team, you need to be able to know how to code with someone else and code on the same code base and then learn how to integrate your code with their code and make sure that everything's working carefully on that front. But after coding for 10 plus years, I think there's one skill that really stands out and that skill is self-learning. Now, some of you might be thinking that self-learning is a cop-out answer because if there's any skill that you're lacking, you can just self-learn that skill and then you have all the skills that you need to be a good software developer. And it's kind of like that genie with the three wishes. Some people, they answer the question, if they were to have three wishes from a genie, they would ask for two things that they want. And then the last wish, they would wish for 10 more wishes. And then it would just be an infinite loop of wishes. And so self-learning is kind of like that skill where it's like an infinite loop of skills. But before you click out of this video, I want you to hear me out because I do have some good reasoning and some anecdotes on why self-learning, why I think self-learning is the most important skill to have as a software developer. You see, I think a lot of beginner programmers have it the wrong way. A lot of them keep thinking, oh, I need to learn this programming language and then this programming language and I need to get better and better and better at those programming languages. But I think what you really need to do is you need to learn how to learn, self-learn other programming languages. And this is why I don't think boot camps are really that helpful because you can go into a boot camp you can learn a lot of practical things and these are really helpful things especially if you're going into a certain software development field and then you have a, a boot camp in that field then it's really good to have like a survey of the skills that you would need to go into that field but the boot camp is not going to teach you how to self-learn the other programming languages all the different frameworks and all that there is in the software development world you can be a master at the thing that the bootcamp teaches, but what happens if that technology becomes obsolete? Would you be able to then learn other programming languages or frameworks and learn the next big thing and then be able to adapt? So I would say we need to focus less on a particular tool and a particular framework and a particular language and focus more on being a self-taught developer and acquiring that most important skill of being a self-learner. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking more about self-learning, share some anecdotes about self-learning as in my experience, and also some observations about the world. And you'll start to see really why, uh, why I say that self-learning is the most important skill as a software developer. So my name's Henrik and I'm here to help you learn the software skills and tools you need to grow in your software development journey and become a self-learner. So let's get started. <laughs> By the way, if you're in the early stages of your programming journey, I've got a special gift for you. It's called my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a guide that will take you from no coding experience to building your first four projects. And the best part is it's free. It's a free gift to you. In this coding challenge, I guide you in 30 days to build four programming projects and I give you some tutorials that are in C. But of course, these projects are really generic and really beginner friendly. And so you can actually code them in different programming languages. You can still benefit from this guide because you can just take the principles that are in my challenge and then apply them to your programming language. You can find the challenge in the link in the description. And if you download it and pay attention to what it says, you'll definitely learn some fundamental programming concepts that will give you a good foundation to your software development journey. So as I was alluding to earlier, it's kind of dangerous if you're just focusing on one particular programming language and one tool and one framework. And that's because there are so many different programming languages and different frameworks out there. And when you're a programmer, you'll start to see that one, one programming language may not be enough. You're going to need to learn how to pick up other programming languages. And this was my experience when I went to my first company. When I went to my first company, the only programming language that I knew was C. And it's interesting because when I went to that company and they asked me to code, they needed a software developer. They asked me to code and the first programming language they asked me to code in was C++. And then after that, my next project, they asked me to code in Python. And then they asked me to code in Java and then JavaScript. And then eventually I came back to C. And that's all that to say is that, and my, my company was a research company, by the way. 
And the reason why we had these different programming languages is because depending on the research that we were doing, uh, we really had to focus on a particular programming language. And some programming languages were better for the research that we were doing. For example, in many of my projects, we were doing some applications for mobile development. So that's how I started to get into Java because I was coding in for Android. And so I had really had to know all these different programming languages. And even one of, my, one of the tools that I had in our company, one of the products that we were developing, it required a Python. It had so many different programming languages in it. It had C++ and then Python. And this was for the back end. And then for the front end, we had Java. And so I was developing on the GUI application. And so even when you're developing on a product, you're going to have a lot of different programming languages that are working together and interoperating with one another. Fast forward to when I went to my second company, I knew C, C++, Python, Java, JavaScript. And then what did they ask me to code in? They asked me to code in C Sharp. And so my, my company didn't really need all those all that experience that I had, but because I had all that experience, because they knew that I was able to pick up all these other languages, then they were confident that I was able to code in C Sharp. And they really needed me to code in C Sharp for what they were doing at their company. So what I really want to highlight here is that sometimes employers are not really looking at your programming languages and expecting you to code in those programming languages. What they're really looking for, especially if you're at the beginning of your software development journey, they're really looking for someone who's willing to learn and do the dirty work of picking up new things, new skills, and especially with the code bases they have, if a company has a code base and they're going to show you their code base, that code base is probably going to be thousands and thousands of lines of code. And even just understanding the code base is going to take some, some learning. You're going to have to self-learn their code base and it will take some time before you're able to really know where certain parts of the code base is. And so it's one thing to know how to program, but it is another thing to understand the code base of your company. And so in my company, it took me a while before I was really able to understand where everything was in our code bases. But now my supervisor can just come in to my office, tell me something is wrong, and then I can know exactly what which file of our code base it, the, the problem is actually happening in. So the bottom line here is that I was hired to program in languages that I didn't even know how to code in yet. And that's why I think there's a danger when you're focusing too much on a particular coding language, because say you're going to apply for jobs, you don't know what programming language you're going to be coding in, in the in the company that wants to hire you. You don't want to get too into the weeds of a certain particular programming language. And then you go to the company that wants to hire you and they don't actually care if you know how to code those kinds of things. They want you to pick up something new. And so that's just something to keep in mind. You really want to be able to have that skill of self-learning because that's probably what you're going to be doing when you start your first job. So some key takeaways from my jobs, especially that first job because it was a research company, and that is that software development is often about the easiest and shortest path to success. Whenever we're coding something or we want to develop something, we want to implement our research into a proof of concept, we're really looking for the path of least resistance, the path that will take us to success in the easiest way possible. And so that often involves self-learning. And that's because there's going to be new technologies out there. And we, we have all these different new technologies, these different programming languages, these different frameworks. Then we're going to choose the one that's the most development, that had, that's the least cost. And so we're always we're, we're not going to be using the same old tools that we're always using. We're going to look for more advanced tools that we can use to implement our research. So I want to zoom out a little bit. The reason why we have so many different programming languages and tools out there is because the digital world is constantly evolving, constantly changing and constantly growing. I remember when I was young, my parents bought a big computer and we had to fit it on our shelf. We had our own shelf dedicated for that computer and it was really big, but it was really simple. It was just a console and my mom would type in words. You would just type words in there and then use it to print out some official documents. And then fast forward, we got Windows and Windows 95, Windows 98. And then fast forward some more, I started to see Mac computers in my schools. And then fast forward some more, we started to get iPhones, Macs, and then Android, iOS. 
and then fast forward some more we have react and then we had all these different these cool web browsers and then now we have ai and a lot of people like to ask if ai will replace programmers and i've made a couple of videos about that if you're interested but i think the antidote and the way to become ai proof is self-learning i do believe that ai will replace programmers as we know them today but i also believe that programmers if they're going to stay relevant they're going to change as well and the only way that they can really change is if they're self-learners and so if you want to stay relevant and stay ai proof you need to have that important skill of being a self-learner once you're a self-learner and ai is starting to become more integrated in our software development industry then you'll be able to adapt and know where humans are actually needed in the software development world. And so that's why being a self-learner is really key. You can really self-learn the skills that you need to stay relevant in the software development industry. I remember when I first joined the workforce and I talked to my coworkers who were much older than me, some of them were 30 or 40 years in, in the field, and they would tell me that they originally coded in Fortran. And so they coded in Fortran or assembly, and then over time, they started to learn C and they learned C on the job. But for me, I learned C in university. And so you can see how there's a progression of technology that has grown in our industry and they've had to adapt. They had to keep changing, keep growing. And those skills that they had before with Fortran, those became obsolete, but they didn't become obsolete because they self learned C. And it's not just about learning more and more programming languages. When I talk about self-learning, I'm also talking about self-learning different hardware as well. And so when there's new hardware that's coming into your industry, you're going to have to adapt your code to the new hardware. So being a software developer is not just about learning a particular set of skills and then you're done. It's actually a process where you're continually growing and you have that one skill, which is self-learning. And that self-learning is helping you learn more, more skills and more tools more programming languages and then over time you become a better software developer and you can do more things in the software development world all right so those are my thoughts on what is the most important programming skill and that is for me it's self-learning and i'd love to know your thoughts do you agree with me and if you don't agree with me what do you think then is the most important skill for programmers all right, like i mentioned earlier if you're just starting off in your programming journey and you don't know where to start you can download my 30 day beginner coding challenge and it's a 30 day guide where i teach you how to build those four beginner programming projects it's really beginner friendly and I go step by step on how to build each one and go through the tutorials that you need to build each one. So download that in the link in the description. All right, that's it for this week's video. I hope it really helped you out and gave you some insight and clarity on what you should be focusing on when it comes to self-learning how to code and hope it also encourages you because this skill of self-learning how to code is actually a skill that you're going to be continually using. And if you foster this skill more and more, then you'll be able to do great things in your software development journey. And so if you really like this video, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.